What's up? Hello. Hi. We're back, man. Go ahead, Pa Choi. It's I almost the end of Gong Hei Pa Choi. I'm still feeling the CNY mood. That's why I'm still wearing red. Do you know you're wearing red also? No, this is orange, my friend. Orange. It looks red. Red enough, lah. Ong yeah. Ong so far, your Ang Pao collection, Ong or Bo Ong? Uh, quite Ong, but if you want to make it more Ong also, feel free. Ah. I already gave it to you, lah. Okay, man. The, the more, the better. I'm caring, more caring. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Chinese New Year is almost coming to an end. Actually, before you know it, it's just like gone, just like it's that. It's already February, like, come on. I, like just yesterday, I thought it's just a new year, 2020. Now it's already February. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, it's going to be Christmas already. Yeah, I know. It's be but it's, I just want to say it's been the most unproductive, like two months uh, in this entire career. Because you know why? It was Christmas holidays. And before you know it, it's the New Year's holidays. And after that, Tuesday, it's, 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 it's the Chinese New holidays. And then everybody's like, so oh, many holidays. how come I'm going to get things done? Uh? And yeah. then you'll be like, yeah, well, That's you why. think? All right. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. Um, I think uh, Ryan's particularly very very excited okay yeah. uh, actually a lot of a lot of people you know uh, in our office are also very excited la. to be honest i'm still quite excited la, because you know you know <laughs> everybody aspires to be he's like this person he's like goals you know yeah he's like goals <laughs> for every <laughs> filmmaker right in malaysia this person represents goals you know Everybody wants to get there. The, sh- the shining light of the industry. And he's got an amazing, <laughs> he's got an amazing story uh, on yeah. how he started. Uh, then again, you know, I read it online. You can't trust anything you read online. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we have on the show. He's a filmmaker. He's a director. We have Quick Show Chan. Hey, hello everyone. Wow, you set me up so high. I'm so malu already. Eh? Hey, don't lie. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> I just can't high, high enough. You cannot talk already. <laughs> yeah. So we we know you as Quick. Yes. So for, this, for the entire show, we're going to call you Quack. Yes. <laughs> please do that. <laughs> Only yeah. my mom calls me Shou Chuan, so oh. please, just call, <laughs> please just call me Quack. Now, okay, now you, have a lot of, you have a lot of uh, awards, multi-award winning director. I forgot to put that in. Multi-award winning director. Not just one. Director. Uh, a, a lot. Uh. Yeah, multi. For you us, is, we have multi-award influencer. This that doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> you know, people come in, like, see all those medals, like, wow, what's that? Uh, it's nothing. Nothing, uh, nothing. Yeah, uh. it's nothing. It's nothing. So, uh, you know, okay, for those listening right now, I mean, you care to kind of explain what you do? Uh, I'm a film director, but I mostly specializes in TV commercials. So I actually make the content that comes before your content that your audiences <laughs> usually skip after five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my main rice bowl. Speaking, <laughs> speaking about that, I uh, just want to say congratulations on your recent TNB spot. Yes. It hit 25 million views. Yeah. Thank you, thank it's you. crazy. I think it was one of the, the most viewed ads or most viewed video, local video in a while or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it is the most... It. View Chinese 25, New Year video. 25 million views. That's no joke, man. Yeah. That's period. almost the whole country. That was actually uh, so so funny because uh, one of our friends actually worked on that production with you, ma, mm-hmm. uh, Justin. I mean, yeah. You know Justin, right? Yeah. So um, then he came, he came, he came, uh, and then after, I think, I think very shortly after that, he came to meet us and he was like, wow, I got to see the water. Wow, where go? Wow, VR. Yeah, wow, wow. <laughs> where can you? Then <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how he sounds. Yeah, everyone. That's how he sounds. Sound. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, when I mean we've seen the previous TV commercials, and of course not just TNB. You work with Petronas. You work yeah. with you know a lot of big brands. Um, but TNB in particular, I think like when you started working on on these TNB commercials, you know mm-hmm. it became more TNB became more of something that everybody kind of looked forward to every festive season. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. So wait, I think like if you haven't heard or have you, you haven't watched actually, uh, so Quack is basically the director for the TNB commercial that you've seen for Chinese New Year, where this guy was actually wearing a VR yeah, uh, custom made uh, VR goggle. Yeah. Chinese New Year VR goggle. So yeah. basically, there was a uh, there was an expectation and there was a, and there was a reality and it was. We're both comedic and touching as well. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like, how? Okay, how did you? Uh, you know, like, like that looks like. Okay, how many days would that shoot take? Because a lot of people would think that. Oh, I don't know. It's quite easy to do. It's a three day shoot. Mm-hmm. It's a three day shoot. But uh, uh, <laughs> compared to some of the commercial project, it wasn't a nightmare to shoot. Like. It was uh, seven a.m. to eleven p.m. Wow. Aver- average for for three days. Okay. And it was actually a pretty fun shoot. Like. Good thing uh, about this particular project is it evolves around two locations. Mm-hmm. So it's just the office and home. Right. Whereas if you check out the earlier yeah. uh, uh, TMB, which is last year's Raya. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow, that is just traveling around place in the hot sun, tracking shots. Right. So this is actually a little bit easier than the previous one. 
and, and that's good. Yeah. And house and office, you get to stay under the fan, under the, the aircon. Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's I was watching so the, that makes a lot of difference. <laughs> I was watching the Raya one, I was like, oh my God, there's so much movement. Uh, Literally no, like every good. other shot, you're in a different location. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, no, that's, that's amazing. Okay, like, um, of course, I just want to talk about more of the dire- uh, your directing, mm. um, you know, on some of the projects you've been working on mm. that we know of. But before we get to that, because those are huge, I just want to kind of rewind back to something that I read online. So, there was this news article that I read, lah. Okay, I think it's I think it's World of Buzz or says dot com. So they were saying that you know when you started uh, your career before you actually started your career as a director, you were basically something like a uh, a transportation assistant. <laughs> yes, I was. I oh was. wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. So how? Okay. When you what made you kind of delve into that and then suddenly transitioning into something like you know uh, a film director and directing films that are internationally watched i think we have to go slightly further back from there so i was doing my form five like, uh-huh. like everyone and i wasn't too good of a student i went to science stream obviously okay. i'm not a science student hey, smarter than me i didn't go science stream eh. <laughs> but but no no better don't <laughs> <laughs> so i really didn't do well on my form five but uh, I kind of got forced into from six. Mm-hmm. If you cannot do from five properly, from wow. six, like it's a check out. Wow. Yeah. Like, from six, you know, okay. Yeah. So I actually kind of flung the trial exams on from six. Oh no. Oh wow. And, and it, uh, uh, very fortunately, at that year, the, uh, Utah, Utah okay. provided this July intake. It was the only year with the July intake, weirdly enough. And so that was like my last resort given to me by my parents. It's like, okay, here's your last chance. You go to Utah or you go and work. I'm like, go Utah, lo. So okay. with, with the results that I have, uh, with the SPM results that I have, I could only choose from the Faculty of Arts and Social Science, Social Science. courses. Sounds really great. Sounds familiar? Yeah. <laughs> which are journalism, Basically public mass relations. Mass mass com, yeah. Mass mass com, mass mass com, mass <laughs> not advertising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So from all the other courses, uh, uh, journalism, public relations, advertising, broadcasting, and I thought, okay, la, maybe broadcasting is the one that requires the least memorizing and writing. <laughs> And if, if I'm entirely honest with you, I had the dream of becoming a DJ. Which really? Is a DJ. So basically, your life, my dream. La. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> and that, that, that's how I picked broadcasting. All so right. when I picked broadcasting, and, and in the whole course of broadcasting, you get to do quite a number of things. Right, mm-hmm. la, right. Yeah, do radio broadcasting, something like this. Yeah. And you get to touch filmmaking. I see. So the first video that I did was, um, was a music video that I uh, used a camcorder to shoot. And mm-hmm. very fortunate enough, uh, my lecturer like, com- convinced me to join this competition. And that's when I met Ruben, actually. Ah. Yeah. So it was that competition uh, that uh, we, we were fortunate. We won quite a bit of awards. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is from there, we're like, hey, this thing is really fun. Huh? Making films, you know, expressing ourselves. A group of us, you know, just shoot something and present it to the people. Well, was this a competition within the university or was it like a public competition open to all? It's an Astro Next Gen Contemporary <gasps> Award. Ah, wow. that's right. Ruben, Ruben actually got, uh, Ruben actually won an award for that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Is that like the film about the taxi driver or something like that? Right? Locked. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, locked. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got okay. locked out of the so car. So it was there, I, I, I know Ruben. And it is around that timeline where I kind of decided that, hey, maybe I should become a film director. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's how it started, la, the dream. I see. But when you graduate, no one's going to hire you as a film director. Yeah. La. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's be real. Let's be real. Let's, let's be real. Let's, let's be real. real. Everybody starts the same way. Yeah. When you go out with your MassCom certificate and people just go, yeah, uh, you're set. Uh, don't you see? Never mind. You start from PA. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, this is how it is. Uh. You, right. in, in this yeah. industry, everybody knows you, you start from the bottom. Uh. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I start uh, from <laughs> sipping all the cigarette butts on set. <gasps> oh, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, for, uh, because I was doing this, uh, I was in art department for a while. Right. Uh, working with the company that I had my internship with. So right. So that was Popeye Pictures. But unfortunately, after the project itself, the company kind of closed down. Oh, oh. wow. So okay. I had a bit of a limbo. It's like, oh, do I continue in this filmmaking thing or do I just go work in a bank? <laughs> oh, okay. How old, how old were you then? Uh, fresh grade, that's 23. 23, okay, old. okay. Uh, because this is also, you know, when you, you are a PA and you work as art department, you are the last one to go back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you don't want to yeah. clean up everything first and before. the first one to go on set. Yes. Yep. And I was so tired, I was at the ATM machine. I key out my money, but my boss happened to call me. So yep. when I was talking to the phone, the money got sucked back into the machine. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't take it, uh, yeah. it kind of, it, it, it basically takes your money back. Oh. But it is counted as withdrawal. Oh, correct. Happened to me before. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. And at that time, 150 ringgit was a big deal. Oh, so wow. I had to go to the bank. And this is like overnight shoot and the sun is rising. I had to go to the bank, line up in front of the bank to wait for the bank to open. And I saw my high school mate. 
Ah. Wearing his shirt and his tie, ready to go to work in the aircon environment. At that point, I really thought, okay, maybe filmmaking isn't, isn't cut out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, this is a lot of suffering. Huh? <laughs> but uh, fortunately, I didn't stop there and uh, somebody actually called me. Uh, it was Biggest Loser Asia. Mm. Biggest Loser Asia. Ah, yes. The was reality that the, TV the, show, that's, right. the, that's the reality TV show that, yeah. that, that basically asks you to lose weight. Yeah. 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 Right? And they were having this show shooting in A Famosa. Mm-hmm. And their previous transport coordinator, Kena Raso Hantu. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Halfway through the project, oh, she no. left. And they desperately need someone, someone to come in and cover emergency. Oh, wow. So they're like ready to, re- willing to take anyone who's willing to take the job. I, I was see. willing to take the job. I'm like, okay, sure. Any job, I'll, I'll do it. Take I'll it, do take it. it. I, I have no take job. Us. I have no job. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in there to become the transport coordinator. Oh. So basically my task is, like I expect, sit at the office with my production manager, and hold my walkie-talkie and arrange all the transportation. No? Wow. So it's like, okay, van four, you got to go to uh, building one to pick out the contestants. Okay, copy. Uh, copy. <laughs> yeah, my runner will give me some kind of feedback. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, that's what I, I was doing. And it is halfway while doing that. It was the year where 15 Malaysia was ongoing by Pete Teo. I think mm. uh, that's the one where Namwe and... Yeah. I saw an episode of that where one with Harith Iskanda mm. and Patrick Teo. Uh, mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw those. Yeah, yeah. which actually kind... It's funny that you mentioned that. I remember seeing those and I'd be like, hey, quite cool, uh, these type of things. I wonder if I can do, but I think I, I cannot afford a camera. Uh, so that's why I, did, <laughs> I didn't even think about it. At that 15 Malaysia, uh, if you remember, Namwe was in Yu Hang's project called Potong Saga. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So you can, uh, you know, like Netflix, I work with Yu Hang, so you, yeah. can, you, you can tell the generation gap. Like, and wow. then he's already like, wow, Yu Hang's right. oh my God, so nice, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they had a separate category on the side, right. which is, or oh, anyone can upload their video. Okay. So it's like 150 Malaysia or something like that. Mm-hmm. So anyone can upload the video. So I just took my chance uh, and I uploaded my final year assignment, oh. which is a documentary about a f- special technique used by fishermen, which is the last generation of fishermen. Uh, shot it with camcorder and all those stuff. And fortunately, the producers at Reservoir mm-hmm. saw that final year project and then they called me while wow. I was doing transport coordinator. Wow. Because transport coordinator is a three months thing. It's a freelance role, three yeah. months thing after the project and, and no, no, yeah, job yeah, yeah. Yet. Right. no job idea. So halfway through that, uh, he gave me a call okay. and say, hey, you know, we saw your final year assignment. We're kind of interested in hiring you. Like, oh, really? Uh? What do you guys do? Uh? Uh, we do TV commercials. You're interested? Uh? Well, to be honest, no one sets up to be you know, to dream like, okay, I want to be a commercial director. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? You always want to be a film, film. director. And, yeah. and cinema. And, and cinema. you know, series <laughs> and stuff series. like that. Yeah, yeah you know? okay. <laughs> but uh, I took the chance that came to me and I didn't regret that actually. It, oh. It's really nice actually yeah, going wow. into commercials. Yeah, I learned a lot from there. So, so that's, that's how it started. So uh. well, okay, so obviously uh, when you join Reservoir, mm-hmm. so Reservoir is a production company that's uh, also a multi-award winning production company mm-hmm. uh, that's actually produced. Okay, in the, I would say that if you watch the Petronas commercials, the TME commercials, which are the, like, all the big ones that are good, so it's chances are they're from Reservoir Productions. So what was the first commercial that you basically directed all on your own, <laughs> like without anyone mentoring you? It is, it's a really good question. It's uh, when I'm 24 years old, mm-hmm. someone gave me a chance to direct three commercials. Wow, the okay. The budget uh, is not the healthiest of budget, mm-hmm. but uh, the ideas were pretty good. Guess who's the producer? Ruben Kang. <laughs> oh! <laughs> this is when Ruben was still in the agency. JWG, JWG. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, I think he told me that he gave you was it a Nestle? It was Nestle. Nestle, Nestle, Nestle yeah. drumstick, yeah. So yeah. it started from there. Actually, Ruben gave me my first break, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that was your big break. Uh. That, that was my big break. That wow. was my first paid job as a film director. A film director. Yeah, before that, yeah, we did some like, uh, uh, go to agency, hey, we have this new guy, Quack, you know, your mm-hmm. award video, let him do la for free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay. So that was the first paid job. I see, yeah. I see. Oh, yeah. Nestle drumstick, three oh, wow, Nestle drumstick. Oh, well done. <laughs> so you know, when so was this? Uh? I think... 2010. 2010. So 10 years ago. 10 years ago, yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Ngam ngam, I mean, Reservoir 10 years this year. So ngam ngam. Oh, wow. 10 year anniversary. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. So you know what it takes to be a very successful director? Number one, 
do a Nestle commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nestle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so like from there, you've been doing commercials. Um, and uh, I think you worked on, okay, you, obviously you worked on uh, some commercials that are huge, like Petronas, mm. uh, TMB, one of them. Mm. And then um, you've been working as a film director for almost 10 years right now. Mm. I mean, like obviously some people, when they study film, okay? Yep. Yep. All right. And they always tell themselves, I aspire to be a director. The mm. first thing they come out when they graduate is like, okay, they're going to look for a job to be a director. Yeah. They don't understand the hardship of like, okay, when, when people tell them, okay, um, I hire you to become a, okay, don't say PA. Lah. Okay, okay, PA. P la, PA, PA is a production la. assistant, yeah. uh, it just in case if you're wondering. Let's say even if you hire them to be like, uh, like you know, uh, what, what, what's, what's other than PA? A line producer, uh, probably. probably. They'll be like, PM. Nah, I'm not interested. Yeah. I mean, do you get a lot of those these days? We, we do, we do, we do. And uh, to me, it's, it's, it's a mentality thing. Uh, because I think to become a film director, there's no set ways. Yep. There's yeah. no like, okay, you follow step one, step two, step three. Oh, wow. And one day you get to be a film director. Mm -hmm. If you serve five years in this, uh, it, it doesn't work like that. So everyone kind of have to find their way to become a film director. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I start the same way as everyone where I'm a production assistant. Uh, basically, it means pao kaleo. You have to yeah, do everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially kuli, when, the, kuli, kuli. Yeah, yeah, especially when the company is small. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, they actually hired me to do a lot of line producing roles, but I realized once I started line producing, I'm really bad at management. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and my, but my bosses actually hated me. I was actually close to getting fired by Reservoir. Well. Oh. <laughs> true story, true story, yeah, true story. So I kind of thought that, okay, if I want to become a film director and if I want to survive long enough in the industry, I have to find my way to go around this thing and try to do the things that's closer to creative work. I see. Mm. So what I do is I make myself available as an editor because uh, I really love editing. Right. right. But uh, before I joined Reservoir, I was doing using like Premiere Pro and other different software. And then once I get into the industry, first time Touch Mac. Oh, oh. Wow. first time Touch Mac. Final, <laughs> final cut. Final cut. Yeah, final cut. So I uh, during the day I'll be doing the line producing job, but mm -hmm. once everybody goes back, I'll stay back in the office to learn how to edit. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So that I can edit for uh, commercial, commercial directors. Because I kind of know that in commercials, the turnaround is very fast. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah. If, you are, if you have access to, say, working with a director, the job keeps coming and you get to access to different directors, doing different job. One would be a car commercial, next month right. doing, doing something maybe, different. Uh. Uh, something different every month. Like maybe food or yeah, maybe, maybe food. property or something. Yeah, so you get to access to all these different, different directors and their different, different styles if you mm. edit for them. So that's how I started to go creative. La. So I, oh. I edited something. I, it's called Turning Off. I wonder if you've seen it. It's just basically me recording all these electronical devices in the office and put them together in the edit. No, I have not <laughs> seen that. Okay, that, that's an interesting one because I shot everything myself to impress my bosses mm -hmm. so that they assign me to edit for film directors. Oh. So it is from there, then I get closer to film directors. I get to see how they work. I get to explore with their footage. And from an editor, soon as you get closer, they'll be like, hey, maybe you want to try assistant directing, uh, you want to try ADing uh, mm -hmm. is when you run the set. Uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, sure, definitely, definitely. It feels like AD is closer to a director <laughs> than an editor. Uh. <laughs> but in truth, it's not. Uh, in truth, it's not. Yeah. But it does, it does feel like that. Yeah. It is from there, when you start ADing, you have to know everybody in the crew. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you have to gain their respect. So that is when you have to learn a lot of human relations. Uh. People, yeah. people Dealing with uh. Eric Yong. Yeah. <laughs> First time, yeah. second job, they make me an AD. I have to deal with Eric Yong. I have to tell him what to do. It's not easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, if, if you must know, Eric Yong is one of the award-winning uh, cinematographers one in the, Malaysia. One of the I was, for me, I know that he's done most of the commercials, but of course, uh, just to put it out there, he's, he, he was a cinematographer for Ghost Bride. Mm. He was also the cinematographer for, I think, uh, Guang, the movie. Guang, Guang the, the movie. movie. As well as The Journey. The yes, Journey. The Journey. And yeah. also for... Um, uh, Lee Chong Wei's movie as well. Yes, so a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of films under his his belt. So yeah, so from the assistant from assistant directing, so how long? So that from the journey from like uh, being a production assistant to a transport assistant, all the way to directing your first film, how many years was that? Actually, the uh, even after Nestle, yep. uh, the jobs are still not flowing in like in a frequent manner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it actually the, the the whole film directing career thing it kicks off after the Guang short film. Oh, ah, yeah. I saw. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah. Wait, I, wait, I saw some. I saw one before. I'm not sure if you did it before that, but it's about um, it's about this makeup artist that no, goes. That's after. That's, that's after, after, right? Okay, sunshine. Was, was it sun? was, uh, sunflower? Sunflower. sunflower. That's right. That's after. 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I saw I saw Guang. I think that's the one that won a BMW shorties. Yep. Yeah. So that's the end of two thousand uh, year end of two thousand eleven. Mm-hmm. So my film directing thingy actually kicks off when people start flowing me with jobs. It, it starts off at uh, two thousand twelve. I see. So that's three years in into right. this mm. pursuit. And uh, even uh, why we did Guang short film is for the exact reason because when you go into the industry, you want to mm-hmm. become a film director, especially a commercial film director. You want the clients to give you the job. Yep. They want to give you the job. They have the money, but they are not sure whether you can do it or not. They want right. to see your showreel. Yeah. Right. But without them giving you the opportunity, you don't have a showreel. Yeah. You have nothing to show them. So mm-hmm. it's a chicken and egg story. So we yeah. thought, okay, like, maybe we make a short film and kind of show people what we can do. Right. Maybe that will attract jobs okay. of the same kind. So yeah, that. Work la, hang la. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hang la. Uh. Oh, hang la, uh, you work. No, but that was, a, that was a great film. I remember watching that when I was in college. I actually, see. yeah, when I was, when I just started going to go into college, I was like, wow, this is, this is something really different. Like, I've never seen local, anything local like this before. Be prior to that la. Uh, I'm sure they, they might have been, but like, I've just never seen anything like it la. Uh. I saw Sunflower. Like big influence. I saw Guang, then I saw Sunflower. Sunflower, Sunflower really got really me. Cool. I'm like, wow. <laughs> because it's like, it's so deep. And you yeah, know, yeah. and I'm like, I'm not gonna spoil it for everyone. You guys should go watch it. You and, know, and the world, the world you bring us into is so interesting in in that in that film as well. You know, the whole world of like, how can you make something yeah. so serious? So, what's the word? So lighthearted at the same time. So I'm like, oh, okay. I saw that, and I I, I forwarded it to my wife. I forwarded it to my mom and all everyone. Like, yeah, hey, you watch this. This is actually pretty good. Then it's she's like, really flattered, flattered. She's <laughs> like, huh? What is that? Your new film, like, mom? <laughs> it's not, mom. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. So okay, now now this is where you, you've done you've done films, uh, you've done commercial films, you know, and you've done your Guang short film, and then you transition from a short film all the way to a movie. Mm. And talk, talk talk to us about that Guang the movie because from that it basically transitions into something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, like I mentioned, no one uh, dreams to become a commercial director. So at the back of my head, there's always this dream of making my first movie, lah. Right. Dah lah, genie boy go and make first. Uh, they make it. <laughs> they, they're so fast, you know. They make. Oh, wow, no. like, wow, one year. Wow, the movie came out already. Wow, so fast. Oh, no. uh, please, please. Guys, like, don't, don't bother comparing. No, 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 don't, take a, don't take us as a helper. Like, we're no very, very late, Didi. Like, very late, Didi. I have to make a film. Like, I have to make a film. I have to go realize the dream, you know, at the back of my head. <laughs> don't ever do a movie in six months, okay? <laughs> okay. Also, also, don't do it in four years. Like. Also, also, don't do it in four years. <laughs> wow. Okay. So what happened is, uh, like, like I mentioned, uh, hey, uh, we kind of reminded ourselves, like, hey, we wanted to be film makers. Uh. Ism- mm-hmm. uh, Ismail and I, if you don't yeah, know who yeah. Ismail is, he's, uh, he was my executive producer. So, you, we had that really close director and producer relationship. I think that's really essential to any success of a film. Mm-hmm. A director and a producer and their partnership. So now, now he's a director, so he converted to becoming a director. Mm-hmm. But when we brought this dream back alive, like, hey, let's make our first movie. We went and you know, do our normal brainstorm, but it is very hard to, because we usually do four minute content. Yeah. yeah. You want to come up with something, 90 minutes is really hard, even yep. at the concept, concept stage. So we kind of thought, hey, we did, quite a number of short films. The one we loved the most was the first one we did, right. which was Guang, Guang. Mm-hmm. which is a story that's really close to my heart because it's based on my uh, real elder brother. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there are a lot more things that I want to tell. There, mm-hmm. There's a lot more things that uh, we can tell from this story. So that's when we kind of decided, hey, why don't we turn this short film into a feature length film? Mm-hmm. And we kind of put it in the back pocket for a while before Sabrina came along. So Sabrina is the executive producer of the project. right? And how this whole thing started is she being the most gung-ho one is like, you all want to make a film, right? I will go find the funds. Oh, wow. wow. When I find the fund, you all have to start work. Right? Oh, right. wow. Right. Funding, you better okay. start. <laughs> <laughs> After she bad, bad, bad people for money, then you guys don't Before start. Before that, two, two creative people talk, I want to make film, I want to make film. Oh, got idea, got idea. <laughs> but but it's, it's stuck at the concept stage. Mm-hmm. So she went around and uh, we are really fortunate to come across this uh, MDEC grant. Right. MDEC grant. Uh, so what it does is it allows you to pitch for any content grant and it, uh, it supports up to 40% of your budget. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so she went ahead and kind of forces, dragged us along into it, and that's how it happened. I see. So when we went into the first speech and we all look at each other and like, okay, this is for real, huh? this is for real. We're gonna step out of our commercial world. We're going to a feature world which we have no knowledge about. Right. And we're gonna not listen to anyone's advice huh? because everybody told us, don't use your own money to make your film. Huh? Uh, <laughs> ah. <yeah. laughs> Dangerous, huh? don't use your own money to make your film. Huh? Yes, we all know that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the first, for some weird reason, the first film, we all ignore it. Huh? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's because it's like, never mind, just try it. Never mind, just try it. Never mind. It's, it's, everyone it's, had itchy want to do something. <laughs> uh, that's it's, it's, it's always that word, it's for portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> but once again, I, I'm, I'm really lucky also because I didn't make loss. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so, okay. So, okay, okay. And that's how it started. Uh. So once we get into the whole script writing, uh, film directing, and I, I, I took on a bit too much roles. Uh. Mm-hmm. I was the writer, I was directing it, and I edited it myself. Wow. Because uh, at that time, uh, we didn't have a editor who's uh, very fluent with Mandarin. Right. So mm. I was the only guy that kind of like, hey, actually, save budget also. Uh, I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and, and, so, and furthermore, I think it's, like, it's li- something that's a very personal piece for you because you know, yeah, you're yeah, writing yeah. a story about your brother. So yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you want it to be told in a way. Yeah. You, if, if an editor's going to be sitting there, you'll be sitting next to the editors. Okay, this one. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Two frames, two frames. Okay, cut. No, 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 no. Go back, go back, go back. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, it only makes sense, you know, that you basically take charge of everything. But after going through it and after taking four years to do it, I would advise against it. Ah. <laughs> I would advise against it. Okay. Advise against to, it. to give you guys a perspective of how long that movie took to make, right? Mm. I remember when we were doing our movie, which was in uh, 2017, mm. we had a freelancer, Eugene. Yep. And Eugene was working on their set. Yeah. And he's done with their movie, finished shooting everything, and then he worked on our set. Mm. And then our movie came out, and then <laughs> just did not come out. <laughs> Eugene, Eugene Young. Eugene Young. Yeah. 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 Eugene Miller yeah. Young. Yeah, I, I remember there was this running joke where, um, cause you, okay, it's a funny story because Erwin, um, who some of you might know, who's actually our, our producer in our company, yeah. used to intern in Reservoir. Yep. Then he he joined he joined my company, and then after that, the next person to join my company was Justin, who also used, used to, to work, work in Reservoir. Reservoir. <laughs> then he came and joined our company. Then after Justin joined us, the third person that joined us is Dixon, who also used to work <laughs> in Reservoir. So the running joke is like Reservoir is like bloody fool. All these people come work here. Ciao, go join Jenny Boy TV. I'm like, I was oh, I was this close to going to reservoir. Not gonna lie. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I applied for an internship. I mean, I mean, I, I kind of envy them in a way, you know. Right. What? Be- because uh, when 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 Jinny uh, Boy TV started, I always have this dream like, yeah, why am I doing commercial lah? I want to do free content, so I want to come up with my own content. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I put on YouTube and be really close to my audiences. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so when they jump from reservoir to Jinny Boy, I'm like, ah, yeah, see, they all, hmm, they can go do this thing, <laughs> and I never get to do that. I, I, I'm like, okay, I'm stuck here. I no, 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 no you, you're, you're you're definitely onto bigger things. <laughs> so okay, now you you um the film released in uh, Malaysian theaters yep, all right yep. guang mm. and i watched it okay i'm so sorry i watched it on a flight <laughs> no, no problem <laughs> yeah i remember watching it on the flight me and my wife were like both of us press play together her side my side boom then we play then we look at each other like watch 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 i'm like okay and after that uh before you knew it um you were actually the film was actually bought by someone or was it re adapt I, I can't I, how, how do you explain that because you went to china to do something so after we finished the film yes uh we tried to sell it right it didn't sell at first, okay. which is why it took four years, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is why I went into a brief period of depression. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, after that, then we managed to sell it to MM2. I see. So mm. that, this is with a, with a reshoot and with a re-edit. Okay. So, okay, it took four years to reshoot it and re-edit wow. it. And okay, finally, okay, we have one uh, common edit that everybody can agree with. So they bought it. And uh, very quickly after they bought it, uh, Fox bought it. Oh, wow. Fox bought it. Okay. And uh, so that settled the whole distribution rights and whatnot. So when it came on air, it was quite well received as, as in uh, people who watched it give a pretty positive response, which is uh, I'm very thankful of. Mm-hmm. Very thankful of. And uh, MM2 has branches in all over the world. Mm. So when they release in, it has a release in Hong Kong, it has a release in Taiwan as well as Singapore, and then there's MM2 China. Oh, uh, okay. China, they do things in a different way. They like to take your stuff and make it their own. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have YouTube. Right? They have YouTube. Yeah. yeah. They have YouTube. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so they, they work in a very different uh, yeah. philosophy than, than us, especially in the broadcasting world. So they saw the film and uh, just a little bit of insight. Like, in China, the censorship is really... <laughs> oh, really? What's the yes. Malaysia? Uh, in certain sense, yes. They cannot, wow. they cannot show ghosts. No wow. ghosts. Wow. Oh, because really? socialist country, you're not supposed oh. to believe in God nor ghosts. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Demon borderline. Demon because, okay, from object. Okay. Pai Gu Jing la from Bo, uh, Huli Jing la from a fox, but yeah. cannot ghost. Human, after they die, they don't reincarnate. You cannot show that. Oh. Wow. Yes. Okay. So no ghost film. So that's one genre gone already. I see. So th- is that why China doesn't really have horror films? Yeah, they don't. Wow. I never realized that. And after that, they kind of restrict their own period film. You know how what China are famous for? Their period yeah, films, yeah, 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 yeah. their princesses and all those things. They restrict their own period films mm-hmm. because uh, apparently a lot of filmmakers 
using period as the background, they kind of kutuk the government a little bit here. Oh, and there. Okay, okay, so okay. because it's period and it's before it becomes a socialist. Right. So they could tell things with in a different style. Yeah, yeah, in a different style. So the government kind of realized that it's like, okay, they're limiting their own. Stop their propaganda. Yeah. Lah. yeah. So the safe genres are one, sci-fi, because it's about the future and nobody yes. knows what, <laughs> you know? And the second one being family films. Oh. So the films that actually talks about, uh, you know, special characters like like Guang fits into a category where mm. it's safe. You, you're talking about two brothers and their hardship facing the society mm-hmm. and how you know autism plays a big role in the society and how we should uh, you know treat them and how we should look at look at autism as as an issue. So that fits into the genre that they want to make. Right. And that's how they approach us. Oh wow. Yeah yeah. So did you have to rewrite the script in any way or like, you know, a lot of things, the how, I mean, you were there for quite a while, right? How, how many months were you there? Uh, in and out, but uh, the, the whole duration was about half a year. Oh, wow. Half a year. So, so you shot, everything is done. Ev- only me, Eric Young, the rest is different. <laughs> oh, wow. So only yes. you and Eric um, yep. took back your roles as a director and, and, the, the, D- and the DP. Everything was different. We have a panel of scriptwriters because we, uh, this is something that I agree with as well. Because if I'm going to China and I'm going to shoot another Guang, I don't want to make the exact same one. Okay. Yeah, so they yeah. have uh, this conscious effort of, hey, let's make it more mess. Let's talk more about the younger brother. You know, because see. the Malaysian one, it, 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 you've seen it. Yeah. A lot of things hidden. Like when he talks about the ex-girlfriend, you only see it from the phone. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, so they're like, hey, why don't you shoot it? Why don't you shoot the breakup scene? You know, make, make it more apparent to the audiences. Mm, mm. Make, it all, make, it more, make it more accessible to the audiences. Right. And we dial up the whole uh, Sue and the character Sue as well. Mm-hmm. That's quite a number of changes, to be honest. Quite a number of changes. The key points remains the same. Uh, I assume that everyone has watched it. La. <laughs> if you haven't, you should. If, if you haven't also, you don't have a chance to watch it. Eddie, <laughs> <laughs> like, where to find? I want go, to. Go on Malaysia Airlines. <laughs> fly, <laughs> a, fly a three hour flight and go watch it in the flight. Is this the one thing, the one thing I, I don't say hate, la, the, the biggest, my biggest problem with Malaysian movie, right? Mm. After it's out from the cinema, right? Mm. Yeah. There's no way else to watch it unless it's bought by like Netflix or yeah, something. Yeah. Oh, like, okay. okay. Oh, no, man. Commercial break, commercial break. Suddenly, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is a chance for you to watch Guang. Okay. We will have a special screening soon. No dates announced yet, but okay. there will be one screening in uh, the curve. Okay. Because uh, of the, the the Macau thing. Ah. Because of the Macau thing, that, uh, the Asia Pacific Film Festival, the 59. Oh, wow. okay. So we were really fortunate to become the first Malaysian film to won Best film. Yes. Wow. Film Congratulations festival. on that. Nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> really, really glad. So, so say, guys, shining star in the industry, man. Yeah. So, so Finas is uh, uh, arranging this award passing ceremony. La. Okay. Initially, they thought, hey, why don't we have a dinner? Then we thought, hey, why don't we have a screening? screening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> why don't we have a screening? Because there are uh, a lot of people that came to me, PM me. It's like, hey, where can I watch it? Where can I buy a DVD? It's yeah. Like, yeah. DVD obsolete. La, guys. <laughs> <laughs> where can I download or stream yeah. it? It's like, like, I want to pirate the movie also cannot pirate it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so here's your chance. There will be a special screening. So make sure nice. you catch that if you haven't watched Guang yet. Right. So the China version, uh, the, the main points are the same. Yeah, you will... You, when you watch it, you will see uh, similarities, f- similarities, familiar bits, familiar key points in the story points. Yeah. But there's also additions to it. Okay. Fresh stuff. Stuff that, you know, at the back of our head, uh, it's my and I, it's like, uh, things that we wanted, wanted to, to change, right? Yeah. You know, we could have done better here. Uh, oh. then, uh, let's, let's do it in the China version. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. I see. Yeah. I see. So, okay. So, if that when that releases in China, will there be a possibility that it releases here? I mean, will it make sense that it releases here again, marketed differently? Say if it hits 10 million renminbi, maybe we Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, can, okay, can, okay, can, 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 can. Yeah, all right. China, 1 billion people, I think 10 million, 10 million renminbi shouldn't be a problem. If, if I'm honest <laughs> to myself, I think it's a long shot. Okay. I think it's a long, it's a long okay. shot. I think it's a long shot for the film to, one, do really, really well mm-hmm. for it to come back here. I think it's a long shot. I, okay. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Nothing is impossible. And then nothing when the, impossible, the yes. film comes back here, it's like, oh, no lah, nothing lah. Small thing. <laughs> Small thing la. We only made like 400 million. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no you know. We kind of like put Avengers down and stuff like that. No, no. So, <laughs> moving from that, mm. recently, the most recent one, I remember waiting to midnight to mm. watch the premiere of this on mm. Netflix. Mm. Can you talk a bit more about your, your most recent work, Ghost Bright? The Ghost Bright. Wow, what an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> the Ghost Sprite. Because uh, the Ghost Sprite is with Netflix. Uh, yeah. You can actually watch it. It's now uh, on Netflix. It's, I, I just uh, got to say that, you know, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. I may be wrong, but you know, a lot of filmmakers aspire mm. 
to work with a Netflix original yeah. content, right? Let me put it out there that working with Netflix is an absolute peach. It's yeah. so nice to work with an international company. Mm-hmm. The way they run the business itself, you know, how they have an entire marketing team that's working alongside the production team at the get-go. Once the idea is confirmed, uh-huh. we, we present to the marketing team, uh, the creative concept, the showrunners, and yep. the marketing team actually present to us how are they going to push this film. Wow. Oh, wow. And uh, if, you, if you follow the Hollywood formula, it's one-one. So yeah. they spend as much money to make the film as much as to market. no marketing. Yeah. And as we all know, Hollywood films sell. Yes. Yeah. That's the formula that works. That's yes. the formula that yeah, works. Marketing is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So at the get-go, you get that and uh, you know, they follow a very strict regime of shooting 12 hours a day. Oh my God. That's I like really love that. I really love you, you were tell- Ryan was telling me about this when he was, you were interning so in was, the States, right? I was right? interning in LA for three mm-hmm. months and this is their, their small budget project. Uh, it's like one of our big budget ones already, uh, just to put it out there. <laughs> and like you said, it's very strict rule. I remember we went like 15 minutes over 12 hours and my producer was like swearing. I was like, he was like trying to get everyone hey, faster. Come on, we got to finish now, now, now. It's only 15 minutes over, you know. Yeah. In Malaysia, oh yeah. man. Yeah. If you finish 15 minutes after 12 hours, you're damn lucky, already, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, 12 hours, you're mentioning 12 hours a day. What else? Mm. Uh, and to be honest, it's the first time I step out of Reservoir to work with another company oh. in this 10 years period. Oh, wow. So I kind of am a kata bawa tempurung, actually. <laughs> I've, only, I've only been working with one production company. So to actually go out there to work with different people, to have a co-director like Yu Hang, a mm-hmm. veteran, like I mentioned before, 15 Malaysia, I was just a PA. I wasn't even a PA yet. Yeah, okay. I was just a nobody and I already watched his film, living his film, to actually get to have a chance to be partnered with him. Uh, to sit down to do this new genre. I've never done a horror fantasy right. before. Mm-hmm. To do a new format, I've never done a series before. Everything is just so fresh to me that I go in with a learning mentality. Mm-hmm. And and I really learn a lot of things. Wow. It's, it's, it's not just things about filmmaking, it's also things about you know how to conduct myself as, as a human being. Uh, I see so many new characters and this entire crew, I call them the ghost team. La. Yep. I, I love them all. You know, to, wow. to, to be able to spend that entire duration with them, shooting with them, the cast and the entire crew is just, wow. You know, and you I, shot in all over Malaysia, right? Everything was shot locally. Everything is shot locally. I, I would think 95% of the entire cast and crew is Malaysian. Right. Yeah. So what you see on screen, the art direction, the wardrobe, the craft, the location is all Malaysian. done by Malaysians. Yeah. 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 Across uh, Taiping, Penang, Johor, as well as, uh, no, we didn't shoot Malacca. Uh, Taiping, uh, Ipoh, Penang and Johor, yes. I think in Johor, you guys kind of like built the whole entire street in a in a sound studio. If I'm not, is it true? Yeah, most of it is done in Pinewood. Pinewood Studios, yeah. Uh, it's no longer mm. Pinewood. It's it's just it's, Kanda. Kanda. <laughs> it's no longer Pinewood. <laughs> but uh, it's oh, to shoot there itself, it, it's an experience. It's right. an experience because wow. it's so well equipped. It's so well equipped and. Uh, some people don't like it, but I like it because it's a really quiet place. It's Kanda Putri, you know? Mm-hmm. It's almost yeah, like yeah. You, you go to shoot and you go back to your hostel, which is in a hotel, yep. and nobody else is there. Right. <laughs> Very much, it's just China tourists and you guys. <laughs> 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 so I could run on set every day. It's like, oh, you know, because there's no cars, it's so yeah. safe, and you can wow. walk, walk to set every day. And I see. It keeps you at that concentrated stage. And right. how long did it take to shoot the whole series? Uh, three months, three months. Three months. Three months. Uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, yeah, three months. 60 days of shoot across three months because there was Chinese New Year in between. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Between. So you shot, you had a co-director of this, right? Yep, is this yep, your yep. first time working with a co-director on a, on a project? I've worked with Ismail, but Ismail is more than just a co-director. You yeah, know, we've yeah. been so close. Like it's, a partner. Like right. a partner. It, it is the first time that I have a, a co-director kind of a system mm-hmm. with Yu Hang. But uh, as I mentioned before, I agree with the men, uh, learning mentality and he is a Chen Pei, you know, he's Sifu, Sifu. Si <laughs> oh, okay. So <laughs> there's a lot of things that I, I, I can learn from him. And, Moreover, I'm a banana. You are? No way, no way. I'm a banana, I'm a banana. Then you shock guang and then you edit guang, how are you yeah. banana? Yeah. Guang, can okay. Talk, uh, can, no, I can, I can, can speak. speak, uh. I can speak. Can, oh. Okay, see, at least you can speak. I, I can speak. Wait. I was about to say like, yes, I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a bit complex. You see my name, uh, Kwek Shuo Chuan. Uh, the mm-hmm. Chuan is like very complicated. Nobody can write can that thing. Uh. Because my father, mother actually went to Taiwan to study. Mm-hmm. Like proper Chinese education people. I think when they came back, it was Generation X problem. They couldn't apply for jobs with that Taiwan certificate. Oh. oh. So uh, my father kind of go, okay, then we're definitely not sending our kids to 
Taiwan. Yeah. SJKC. <laughs> <laughs> We're going SK. We're going to let them have government certificates. <laughs> oh, okay. In a, in a rebellious act like that, that's that's why I became a oh. banana. La. But the mother tongue is still Mandarin. It's Mandarin. Yeah, okay, so okay. That's, that's why I can speak. That's why I can speak. Yeah. Oh, Got I it. didn't know. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I imagine you write your, you would write the script in Mandarin or something like that. Yeah, so I actually depend a lot on Yu Hang. Okay, mm. especially in terms of you know the specific uh, dialogue because Guang is different. Guang is local Malaysian. Very local, yeah. yeah. Local Malaysian Mandarin is, yeah. is how I speak. So when I crafted the script, I just tell my scriptwriter I could I could speak it out, I could act it out. Yeah. Whereas for Ghost Sprite is proper Mandarin. Yes. And uh, there's a lot of Chinese customs, uh, Chinese traditions. So a lot of the the things on that on the, on that side actually I actually depend on Yu Hang a lot. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I watched it. Okay, I, I watched Ghost Bright mm. uh, in one night. I finished it. Wow. Finished the whole thing in one night. <laughs> Six episodes. Right? Six episodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched it. And I was like, I was pretty intrigued. Okay, okay. number one, because mm. it was produced by Quack. La. I know. I mean, everyone was posting about it. I was like, hey, Quack, okay, watch. I watched it. I was like, and and uh, actually my mom was watching it first. Mm. And then my mom told me, you know, hey, don't watch it in front of your daughter because it's got very gory, gory <laughs> things. And I'm like, huh? Okay, cool. Then I watched it. I was like, no, that's not that no. gory and stuff not like that. The first two episodes. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But you know, I, I managed to watch the the whole entire series and I'm like, wow, this is actually pretty interesting. It's a very interesting concept yeah. because okay, I haven't read the book. Mm. But the concept is like, oh. Mm. But for me, it's like because we are in the kind of film industry, you kind of like go into detail. Look, wow, the set them nice. Wow, this streetway. Uh. Wow, which road did they close down to shoot this? Uh? And after that, I found out, oh, they built a set. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, budget okay. quite big. So, so I have a question. Uh. This is about uh, it's, a, it's about a very specific shot sure. in, in The Ghost Bride. Okay? Okay. I can't remember which episode. Mm. It was when Erlang found the love letter, uh, found a... Uh, uh, the love letter in the bedroom from the book, yeah, from the book, yeah, and he he jumps, he suddenly disappears in the uh, in the on top of the cupboard, right? Yeah. So this is my theory. I have a bag going on in the office right now. This is my theory. You mm. use a double mm. and did a Texas switch, and then the double ran out, and then pan, and then the guy jumped. Is that correct? You are correct. What the ah, heck are you talking? Hundred percent correct. <laughs> so basically, it was a they used a double, a fake double. Yeah. And then he just runs off frame. Mm. Then and then when they pan up, then the real guy is up there. <laughs> That's how they show. I'm sure you guys know. So sometimes the the oldest technique works the best. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was it, they, they thought they they actually thought it was like VFX. You guys did the shot again mm. twice, and you posted people on and whatnot. Uh, okay, but another one I want to ask. This one I really don't know how you do. <laughs> and honestly, I think the answer is gonna be like super simple. That I'll like slap myself in the face. The, Why don't the you slap cup. yourself first? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The teacup boiling. Mm. I just how oh the part of there's the part of the cup was just like boiling and it was shaking on its own and I I, I just I just couldn't figure it out because it looked so real I don't think it was VFX at all that was real that is a lot more complicated than getting a lung to do. <laughs> <laughs> so this we actually have a we 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 have a full team like there's a special effects team there's oh, a effects team okay so what they do is they actually have a. <laughs> I don't know if I can say this. <laughs> we have a vibrator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sticks out of the table. So there's a stick sticking out like this. Okay. Oh. And then just to the glass. Oh. oh. Okay, okay. Within the vibrator itself, there's also explosives. Oh. There's waterproof because we are going to put tea inside. Yeah. Right. So what you see is actually how it was. It's completely. We could control right. the frequency. Oh. We wow. Could, mm, mm, we could actually control the frequency and we could explode it at the moment that we want it. Wow. So everything was actually timed to, to perfection. But was it sense. like one of those things where if you explode one time, oh, then you have to take like two hours to reset to put new explosive? Uh, he prepared three cups. Oh. So, so you, got three three tries. you have three tries. <laughs> okay. So I had three takes. Yeah. So wow. how many do you do? How many takes do you do? Actually, we got it on the second one and then I, I was ready to move on. Then he's like, hey, I already prepared the cup. Blown in. Yeah. No other film ever will be, <laughs> will be using, using this cup. So I have to explode it explode it anyways because I cannot keep this explosive yeah, again. Yeah. So I might as well do the third take. Then like, okay, I'll do the third take. Shoot 200 frames. <laughs> <laughs> make it different a bit. Like, make it different. Myself, you know, but, you want variations. Since um, we have it there, right? Yeah. 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 yeah but oh, it, it's, okay, that's so interesting. But it's such, a, it's, it's actually really, really, for me, I mean like, so Ryan's obviously more technical because he's a film director. And for me, it's just very, very, it's so cool to hear your transition from something so humble to something, uh, to something that's basically world wide mm. and then like you know um you know from making movies to shooting movies overseas to doing an international production i mean like i would say that the budget's huge international production um so where like like you know what so probably this is probably your highlight so what's next you know what are you looking for <laughs> to do next what could possibly top your current state right now uh to be honest i don't know mm -hmm. but um 
I will welcome it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll we'll find out together. <laughs> so you, I would, you, so it's it's safe to say that you know you currently you're at a you're at a stage where like you know what I'm really happy where I am. I I, I kind of like you know I'm great that you're grateful that you're able to be given all these opportunities and stuff. I am grateful in the filmmaking sense, but to be honest with you guys, uh, there's a lot of things that I I feel that uh, I still need to learn. Ah. So like uh, making guang itself. Mm-hmm. I, I think if you ask Eugene, you know, I was a very hot-tempered person oh, wow. during Guang. Because before that, I was making a lot of uh, emotional storytelling films. Mm-hmm. And being emotional storytelling films, touching films, there's always conflict. And you know, I always put my mood at the area. I'm sure yeah, you understand yeah. as a film director. So it is during the whole making Guang mm-hmm. drove me into depression. La. I was like mm. neglecting my health, neglecting my mental health, neglecting my relationship. Oh, <laughs> all, okay. all in the name of making this film. Yeah. Right. So while making it, uh, uh, then I started getting uh, advices, especially from like people like Eric Yong, mm-hmm. people like Shane, my AD. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, 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 they tell me that, hey, maybe you should, you know, try the other spectrum of things. You know, making films is about making people cry, but it's also about making people laugh. laugh. Right. And that was actually my first transition into humor. That's okay. when I started, started okay, maybe I should try doing humor. And that's when I changed from Petronas to TMB. I the see. Raya uh, one, was it? Is it that the one where like the, 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 the it starts with the guy with this, uh, well, not real Manchester United logo thing. No, <laughs> no, the no, room, no, the no, no, no. Which one? No. I think I know. It's yeah, the the yeah. the first one is Giro one, right? There's one more before Giro. There's one more before Giro. Is it, the, is it the, the flying feather duster and no, the, the, the one before that? Oh, oh, there's so many. <laughs> there's <laughs> so many. <laughs> the one with the three princesses. The, 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 oh the kung, the yes! Kung fu, the cooking, oh yes! The we were referencing. We were, yes. we were we were watching it uh, because we were we, we, were, we did we tried to do something similar. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah we were shooting like, we were shooting oh, something man. for Chinese. That was New crazy. Year. The crazy VFX and then yeah, the fire yeah. and the oh that was insane. I think that was the first time where everybody like whoa because that was basically shared on WhatsApp. Yeah. All of my uncle aunties everything like, oh Nikan Nikan Nikan. I'm like yeah Nikan 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like oh wow okay. and it, obviously it was all over Facebook and we were like well this is actually pretty cool for us. It's like wow how did they build it how did they build it. So that, was, like that was your first uh, collaboration with TNB. Uh, that that like was video. my first collaboration with TNB, and that was actually my first like really like attempt to do humor. humor. Attempt oh. to do humor. So from there, uh, that there's another dream now. So after Guang is done, I want to do a comedy a film that's comedy. Wow! Yeah. And since it's gonna be comedy, I might as well do a Malay comedy film. Oh, oh. Mm. So okay. Th- that's actually in the plans, uh. I see. So apart from the whole Guang China thing, mm-hmm. right? Uh, <laughs> because Guang China, essentially, I'm doing the same thing for the third time. <laughs> okay. Right. <It's laughs> like short film, feature film, China I, feature I, film. I do have that at the back of my head. Like, I'm doing this the third time. Uh. I definitely don't want to do it the fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> so my next film, uh, especially for the local audience, I would like to attempt a Malay comedy film. Wow, mm. that's all. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. So this year BMW shorties again, uh. BMW shorties? Hey, oh no! I actually that's a curious question. If mm. you want the BMW shorties one time, mm. are you allowed to join again? I think you are allowed, but I don't think I want to. <laughs> 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 He's there already, it's dude. Like, right. No, 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 no. I, 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 I don't want to, lah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> once, once is good. Once is good. <laughs> so Malay, a Malay movie. Mm. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. All right, cast me, thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak Malay to save my life, but never mind. It's okay. Boleh, boleh, boleh. We put yeah. you somewhere. We put you somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Just put me like you know at the back over there, like one of the extras. Yeah, you know, like no, no, maybe we appear tree. together. We appear together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all, it's all funny. Shot, one shot. You know, it's funny because I was watching the uh, Ghost Bride, right? All of a sudden, like, like watching, watching, then Quack comes. <laughs> he, he, Quack makes it like a cameo appearance. I'm like, Whoa! <laughs> I did it. I was like, not bad. I mean, like, out of all the cameos that he chose, he chose them. I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. To be honest, huh? okay, I had to defend myself this one. <laughs> I actually didn't want that role. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Because yeah. you hung got that nice role with the, with the whole, you know, his Charlie Chan. Yes, yeah. yes. I wanted to be the servant who got slapped by Madam Lim. Oh. <laughs> Why are you all cleaning the room? Oh, no, 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 Madam, but because of pop. <laughs> I wanted to be the servant. I really wanted to be the servant, but oh, they man. don't allow me to be the servant. Okay. So my AD Andre, like he went back and he really thought about it, and then he complot with Yu Hang, and then they forced me to become the Heaven's Guard. Yeah, <laughs> you should watch it. If you're listening and you haven't watched Ghost Bride, and you know you should you should watch it. It is uh it is something to be proud about because you know it's a it's a Malaysian production. You know two two Malaysian directors who are directing a film that is obviously wor- uh, watched worldwide. Ninety five percent Malaysian crew yep. cast. Yeah. Yep. Shot completely in Malaysia. Honestly, I was just blown away. Like. Like, you know, we keep saying like, hey, Malaysia men can do things like that. Finally, there's someone out there doing things like that. I just, I, I, okay, I think that Malaysians actually got a lot of people who are capable of doing it. It's just that for some, okay, I mean, I may, I, it, I may be, it may sound wrong coming out from my mouth, but 
I feel that sometimes they're not being supported enough to basically do or, or bring their visualiz- visualizations to life. I kind of feel that like, you know, somebody has a great idea, mm. but the thing is they're not well equipped, whether it's technical mm. or funding or anything to, to basically make it happen. And most of the time, and when, when that happens, it'd be like, oh, I just give up on you now. And and not not you know not care about it. Mm. I, I kind of feel that the I don't know. A lot of people I hate the fact okay, so when I started YouTube, yep. uh a lot of people thought we were Singaporean because they think that Malaysians cannot do it. Oh. Yeah. So they, they the the minute when we did the whole YouTube thing, okay, please, I mean in nowhere compared to your quality. Uh, we, we, we're just doing stupid, dumb videos and people were thinking that, oh, yo, these bloody Singaporeans are making fun of Malaysians. It took them a while to actually realize that I was a Malaysian. Okay. Yeah. And this is with regards to the fact that I was already working in radio for about seven to eight years. People still think that I'm Singaporean. Like, oh, this fellow uh, make fun of our dialect. What do you think? Uh? And then after that, surely more and more people kind of like, hey, mm. the, you have the small minority saying that, Yay, you Singaporeans making fun of us. But the majority suddenly came out, eh? Mm. I've never seen this before. Yeah. Mm. I'm so happy that, you know, someone's actually talking like me on screen. Mm. And that's where I kind of feel that, you know, a lot, everybody, particularly the media, mm. has always been per- perceiving that good films are meant to be American films. Mm. Yeah. And, and for me, because I've worked for the media before, it's like, whatever you put on radio has to be American top 20 or yeah. American top 10. You know, Malaysians want to do their own music. Well, I want to come with more music. Oh, sorry, your quality is not good enough. You go to the Met 10. Yeah, so I just, that's just, just for me. That's what I think. I feel, I kind of feel like a lot of local creatives are not just supported well enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. What do, what do you think about that? I think, I think what you say, there's, there's definitely truth in it. Lah, that uh, Because if you, if you look at the Ghost Bride, yep. uh, the production designer, his name is Leslie, he does crazy rich Asian. Yeah. yeah. He's a crazy rich Asian, you know? And he's, he's Malaysian, right? He's Malaysian. Yeah. So whenever there's a chance when, see, like when the ghost bride came along, of course he jumped on it. He was really yeah. excited. That, oh, this entirely Malaysian thing. And he wants to do it. It's just that sometimes, uh, it's all above, uh, like, like what you mentioned, sometimes it's the funding. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the projects are not, you know, it, within the capacity. Mm. But it's also the other side also. Uh, maybe there's also truth mm-hmm. in the fact that our content is not there yet. I mean, I don't expect everyone mm. to be c- coming out with great content. Come on, do you think all American filmmakers come? I mean, uh, I won't say American filmmakers. Do you think all American movies that come out are great in the cinema? Yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Come okay. on, man. Have you I watched think, Doctor yeah. Doolittle? Yeah. I think, I think that's a that's a great point. Actually, you know? yeah, that's a great point. That's yeah, great I mean, point. like, I mean, the thing is, okay, even Doctor Doolittle goes on the cinema and Rotten Tomatoes give him a nineteen percent rating. Mm. It still makes a hundred million bucks. Mm. So if you see that's that's my that's that's what I'm trying to say. If you go to the cinema and you see a shit film that is an American made, mm. why are Malaysians still trying to say, ah oh, yeah, this is a Malaysian made, I'm gonna watch? You, you know what I mean? I kind of feel like okay, for, for, if yeah. I would if I were to say something, I kind of feel like Guang, mm. if they had like the marketing budget like the Americans or Hollywood did, I mm. think it would be like even bigger. But I kind of I'm not sure whether it's like it's right to say that because I kind of feel like mm. Malaysian filmmakers or, or local filmmakers are not. I mean, they, some of them are supported, but some of them are just not supported well enough, especially, yeah. yeah. I would think definitely some of them are not supported well enough, but I, I would also think it's the mentality of our local audience. Ah. When, mm. you go, you know, when you walk past a, uh, a, a cinema, a cinema yeah. ticket that you buy to actually go in to watch, you know? yeah, yeah. if it's a local film, what do you expect? Yeah. So, so what are the local films that actually sell? If you look at it, Hang Tukat Lima, yes. Murphy, there are certain traits that they have. The films that, like Guang, Guang, is nowhere near that category. Mm-hmm. It's a different category. So there is this uh, stigma that they always tell me when you want to make a film, where do you want to swing it? You want to make money or you want to win awards? Right. But we, we being very stubborn, we mm-hmm. always try to be in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I want, like, I want oh, yeah, to make money and there. win awards. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> being ambitious. Huh? Yeah, but, yeah. but no, no, we didn't achieve that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we made just enough to cover and it's positive, it's positive. It's in the black. Okay. But it's not enough to say, hey, you know, we make a lot of money. It's not that kind of film. You wouldn't it's say it's a anything. very commercially successful. Like. I wouldn't say it's yeah. a commercially successful film. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a commercially successful film. So uh, it is that and um, we have given earnest attempt to meet in the middle, mm-hmm. but we have not been uh, able to do it, which is why I would think the Malay comedy film that I'm going to do next, I'm going to try it the other way. I see. And try to say whether we can make it in the box office or not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because okay. I would think to understand the psyche of that mm-hmm. is also a knowledge that uh, I would like to learn. I would like yeah, to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So that actually answers the question of what's the next step. I would like to, I would like to do that. I have a film, Guang, but didn't sell as much as I wanted it to. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that uh, is because part of... 
Because, because we do know there's definitely a market there. Like, look at the of top box of his films. Yeah, like they're, they they're making in what, 40 million, 30 million. Ringgit. I see it wasn't oh, like that before, you know. Last time it's more of like you make a million already. Wow, it's big news. Then yeah, I think, yeah. Sc- yeah. was it Scope? Scope. Uh, scope. Shafiq Yusuf just came and yeah. <laughs> shattered turned everything upside down. Yeah, the, Shafiq, the big players are the few. He's crazy, like, man. The guy is uh, going insane. And yeah. it's always film that is films that are backed by Astro. 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 Yes. Oh, actually, yes. the journey the journey was the first one that kind of made like, wow, they started promoting the fact that, oh, this made 20 million. I'm like, yeah. wow, not bad way. Local film yep, yep. Uh, overtook a lot of those international films, Hong Kong and everything during yep. Chinese New Year, which yeah. was great. And mm. everybody, you know, was like, oh, this is looking good. This is looking good. And and, I, and of course, okay, like, I would say that current state of the film industry or content in Malaysia obviously is way much better than yeah. what it was 10 years ago. Yep, it's, yep, yep. it's always going uphill. And it, it shows us that it's possible. Yeah. It's possible mm-hmm. that a local film can actually reach out to the mass and a lot of people yeah. actually buy tickets and watch the film. So yeah, it's, actually, it's I do hope the audience will have a change in their perception because uh, I do know some people who will be like, "Oh, what movie you want to watch? Oh, local movie ah, mm. never mind la. Like, I mean, you know, try la. It's, mm. uh, it's what you go on a cheap day, you get some good races, fifteen ringgit. Who knows? You might be surprised at what you watch. You know, it could be a great one and a half hours of your life. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, okay, I w- I won't lie. When I was a lot younger, I had that mentality. But when you make your own films, right, and then people gives you that, like, oh, this is not this is not international standard, then you kind of like ah. Oh, Damn it. It's kind of karma hitting you in the ass. Right. And that's where you kind of like try to appreciate the, you know, the fact of local storytellers and stuff like that. But uh, you know what? I, I, speaking to you today is kind of like really inspiring to know that the fact that, you know, here you have someone who came from a very humble background and who hit a few bri- uh, uh, roadblocks along the way who basically directed an international film with Netflix. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's, yeah. Oh my... <laughs> All of my, all of my, like I'm telling you, I quite, all my boys also uh, dream to be where you are today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm flattered. Thank you. I'm flattered. Jane, thank thank can you, you so much. Can you stop embarrassing us, please? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's like, it's like, they, they, you know, every time Quack releases a new commercial, hey, Quack just releases a commercial. Now I'll be like, but what about our video, guys? Don't you, don't you like our videos? Then they'll be just like keeping quiet, watching the screen. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, but yeah. But I would love to make your kind of video someday, really. It's, it's that part which I don't get to do, you see. I'm always uh, tagged with a brand. I'm always oh, tagged with a brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so there are limitations on my side also. <laughs> I, would, I would love, to, to be honest, I think like I would, I, I would love to work with people such as yourself like Reservoir and stuff like that because I kind of feel like um, okay so we we do YouTube when I started this whole YouTube thing we always had this impression where like you know uh, the production houses mm. uh, were kind of like look pe- like people at us mm. at like us YouTubers like oh these guys are here to like they don't know what they're doing they're spoiling the market they're just making dumb videos and stuff like that <laughs> and we, for me it's like that's kind of what made us strive a little bit harder to kind of like get away from that um that label from a lot of people, from agencies and whatever or not. And you know, they go, oh, they just make YouTube videos. Mm. So that's why we like, if you watch our first video and you watch our video that we, we, we do today, it's like completely different. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is, it is different. <laughs> I kind of yeah. follow the evolution of it. And, and, uh, and, and it's like, it's like you know, uh, we want to tell great stories, do yeah. bigger production. <laughs> it's, it's funny, like, because it's like a running joke inside, inside mm. our company. It's like, I always ask Ryan and always, hey, so when are we going to ever be able to reach Reservoir's quality? Uh? <laughs> oh my God. And everybody be like, oh, yeah. Jin. <laughs> you not dream so easy la. La. Not so easy. <laughs> not so easy. <laughs> la. Not so easy. No, I think it's very different in nature. La. I think there are a lot of differences and that, that, that there's pros in both sides. Mm. There's pros in bo- bo- both sides of things. Uh. Mm-hmm. Really, really, really. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I, I I understand like, when you say like you're always tied to a brand, you know, so you're restricted mm. in that certain sense, you know. There are certain creative outlets that yeah. you cannot express as much as you want because you have to take in consideration what mm. the brand wants as well. And yeah. to be honest, when I mean, you look at the big, picture of commercial how commercial is uh, mm. uh, it's the big shift from TV to online yeah yes, and online involves a lot of YouTubers <laughs> yeah and if I put it bluntly, you guys are taking some of the pie. <laughs> <laughs> the more and more of the pie is going towards the direction, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, okay, look, I'm just, I, I just want to say that I'm very grateful that uh, we even are allowed to take a piece of the pie. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Because to be honest, like, Okay, so okay, Ryan. Ryan studied film. Mm. He studied broadcasting, right? Broadcast, broadcast, broadcast. Not film, broadcast. But then he comes into this knowing that he wants to be a film director. Mm-mm. I when they came up to me and they said that I need an AD, I'm like, what the heck is an AD? Mm-mm. They come to me and they said like, oh, uh, well, what? Um, hey, we need a gaffer. I was like, okay, I go get a gaffer tape and I pass to them. <laughs> I don't know what the, I, I didn't understand the lingo, you yeah, know, yeah. my my understanding was take a camera, put a 50mm lens, mm. shoot a subject, mm. subject sharp, back, background blur, wow, film. 
Wow, look like cinema. <laughs> That's it. That was like, wow, the picture damn okay, nice. Okay, okay. Damn, wow, everything. Okay. So how do you want to shoot this scene? How do you want, every time when I used to shoot, because I used to shoot, edit, mm. uh, everything when I started, every time when somebody asked me, hey, how do you want the, this scene to look? Ah, I want the background blur blur. Yeah. <laughs> that is how I said it. That's yeah. the pro look, the pro look. Yeah, the pro look. I was <laughs> like, pro okay. And then when, when somebody films, frames it a white shot, right? And then after you see everything is sharp, I'm like, oh, not nice, not nice. I want the subject sharp, the background blur blur. That's how I started. And it's 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 it sounds dumb because it is. I you know looking back, I felt like oh man, there's so many things I learned, and I learned it from these young boys. I, I think it's not dumb. Like. I think everybody starts <laughs> yeah. okay because when you hold the camera, the first thing you realize from the change from the camcorder to a DSLR, yeah. it's like, ooh, can rack focus. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, and actually, I start the same way. Yeah. You know? okay. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I can, I can rack focus, I can rack focus. So I do a lot of rack focus shot, rack focus shot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, the, the knowledge is different. As, as in, if you ask Reservoir to do like a, an online YouTube video, mm-hmm. you know, to get it out there at the frequency that you're getting, we are nowhere near the capability, really, oh, to be okay. honest. So I think the knowledge is actually, uh, you can compare it, there's pros and cons, but it's two different knowledge. Yeah, it is. They're both it important. Two different. I would love to have your content frequency and freedom. You get what I mean? Uh? Uh, okay. I would love to okay. have, a, have a video every week. We should like try you and know? do, you know, you know like how last time in school they always have that student exchange program. Uh? Yeah, yeah. They have some staff exchange program. Yeah, they like, cool, cool. yeah, yeah. Switch two people for like, for like one month like that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's cool. <laughs> like, that's cool. Yeah, that, that, that'll be quite... Actually, actually, to be honest, I want to do that. <laughs> we, we should do that because uh, except for Erwin... Okay. Yeah, Justin, they get to do that. They get to do both. <laughs> we don't get to do it. So maybe we should do it. We should do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's interesting. Okay, quick, you know what? Thank you so much for uh for dropping by today. Um before we wrap up today's show, you know, do you want to say anything to aspiring mm. filmmakers out there? Hey, th- thank you all for having me, first of all. Thank you, uh Chini Boy TV. I've been, you know, <laughs> actually we kind of started at the same time and it's nice to see that 10 years. <laughs> in the blink of an eye. La. Yeah. No, no, not really in the blink of an eye. We did a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot. yeah, yeah. So I, I wish uh, all the budding filmmakers, actually, uh, when you chase your dream, leave it open. Don't don't make it a dead end. I want to be a filmmaker and I want to start as a film director, you know. Uh, go along the motions, you know. Uh, go to whatever opportunity that comes, even right. if it's a transport coordinator, as long as you get to be in the production team. Right. As long as you get to mix with a bunch of people that you really like working with, as long as you're having fun. Filmmaking is about having fun. Yeah. We all started the same way. Exactly. We all started by having cameras, a bunch of friends, we shooting and we have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I think we should all always remember that. Yeah. yeah. Filmmaking is supposed to be fun. Yeah, because if you don't have fun, it, it basically yeah. translates to your job. Yeah. Your end become, product. Yeah. 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 You translate to your end product. Yeah. 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 All right, Ryan, you want to say anything else? No, um, no. Thank you so much for hey. coming. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jean. Yeah, hopefully we can work together. I Definitely. mean, I'm just putting it there because the boys will be like, hey, I wonder what it's like. <laughs> I'm, I'm, pu- I'm putting it there too. I'm putting it there too. So, <laughs> Let's hope the universe and the stars align. Put it yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We hope you guys took away something from this uh, episode. If you want to stream us, you can do so online. It is on Spotify, iTunes. You can see our beautiful faces on youtube.com slash Hangouts. We will speak to you guys next time. <laughs>